Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now thanks for watching my last video on homemade paper. And like I said in that video, if you have any ideas for what I could use that for, please still leave them in the comments. You can leave them in the comments on this video and the last video. And I'll have a look and then the next video will be about putting the composition onto that paper. But today's video is all about trying out um, an alternative medium. And I was inspired when I saw that these printer ink cartridges, when ejected, had huge squares of ink that had not been used up. And I saw them and thought, well, how on earth can I make use of this? So what I've done is I've collected a cartridge of each colour. So I've got cyan, magenta, yellow and black. And my plan is to apply them with a brush and water, similar to watercolours, onto a canvas and see if we can and see if we can achieve a similar to watercolour effect. So got all my stuff out on the bench here. I've got my watercolour brushes, my printer ink cartridges, my water, my tiny little canvas just for experimenting, and of course my iPad for photographic inspiration. So we're going to crack straight on with that and get delve into the experiment. I'm really excited to see how this goes and I think it's a really cool and fun idea. And as always guys, remember to like, subscribe and share if you love these videos and want to see more. So let's crack straight on with it and get experimenting. So the first thing to do is going to get some water in my pot, which I don't bother going inside for. I'll just generally remain outside and just go straight to the water butt, so I'll just go and get some of that. There we go, so that's our water. So I'm going to start by finding a good image on my iPad. Now I'm thinking that I'd kind of like to go for a landscape theme. I feel like that would be the best thing to do on here as an experiment as well. That's probably the thing I'm most experienced at. So we're going landscape. Okay, so I've chosen a photo and the photo I've, go I've chosen to go on with is a lovely photograph I've just found of um, Brockham Green, which I took when I went to visit my great auntie did. So it's just a nice little picture of a sort of structure in a park that I'm going to be painting today. Right, so let's just crack on with that. I'm going to start by just sketching, by just sketching out the composition. And for that I like to use a graphite stick which I keep in this little pouch. So let's get on with that. And I've got a little bit of cardboard to um, shade the picture so I can see what I'm drawing. So there's this rather nice memorial structure in the middle which I really like. That's what really caught my eye and inspired me to take this photo. Just sketching that out now. Okay, so I've got my wall in there, so now I'm going to add some colour to it. So I'm going to choose a nice sort of medium sized round brush, it's probably one of my favourite brushes to use, I use it for most things, and water. Now I want my water really close by because on this hot sunny day everything's going to be drying up really quickly and I'm going to struggle to keep the page wet. So the way I'm going to use this ink cartridge is, so you've got this, um, got this orange cap on here. So if we take that off, the ink leaves a bit of residue just in here. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but you get a um, lovely, just a light spot of inky residue. And the inks are quite bold. I only want a tiny bit of ink at a time. It's just like using watercolour really. So what I'm going to do is I can see this pad here looks like it's absolutely full of ink and that's where all the ink is lying so I'm going to push my paintbrush into there I think I feel like that's the right thing to do and as you can see I'm getting loads of ink on my brush and then I'm going to smudge it into the top so this, the ink cartridge caps are going to be like my palette get a piece of bit of water on my brush and I'm really going to smudge that in like I said, like a palette 
Now also in this heat as well, as I'm using ink cartridges, I've got to be really careful that they don't really overheat and um, start leaking everywhere because I don't want it on my painting. So I'm going to, I really want to water this down because this is a war, it's going to be a sort of um, ochre to grey sort of colour, not bright yellow. So I really want to get all of the vibrancy out of that colour. So I'm really watering it down. Okay, and I'll just test it on this blob of white paint, of dried white paint that I've got in there, and that looks fabulous. So I'm now going to go in and give it a little bit of yellow. So I'm just getting my basic colour down. That is yellow. So now, to get this more of the colour I want, I'm going to get the black cartridge also. Black is really good and really adaptable because you can make it into more of a grey and just use it to make colours seem a bit more dirty, a bit more grimy and give them that grey kind of feeling. So that's what I'm going to do here on this wall. I'm going to get a little bit of black. And I'm going to start, just because I don't know how bold this is going to come out, and I don't want to completely ruin it with a big black splodge. I'm going to start by going down the line of the wall because then if it does come out too dark, it's not a problem. Um, you know, it will just look like a little bit of line work. So I'm just going to... And I'm going to start at the top and sort of fade it out towards the bottom to give the impression of light and shade. So I put on the dark... Um, low lights in the wall and like I did on the other um, like I did on the side of the wall I'm going to add a bit of cyan into it because it has got a very bluey tone to the grey just a slight blue tone to the grey so I'm just going to add a suggestion of this through just a dabble of cyan I really want it really light because otherwise it's going to turn green and Green is not what we'd like. Because there's this limited palette of colours, um, with just the primary colours and the black, um, I want to use each colour in itself to contrast against the colours in the composition. So, um, so for example, if the grass is going to be green, I don't want too much green coming through in the wall because it's not going to stand out okay so now i'm going to go on to the memorial and like i said with the tree um i want the memorial to be in a sort of more warmer red tones to bring it out against the wall so we can create this illusion of back middle and foreground Diana just wash in again wash in with the yellow um just around filling in the lines I've drawn once again it's just like a colouring book you're just filling that in so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to try something a bit different to what we was doing what, what we were doing earlier now to add in some low lights and some shadows so I'm going to take my graphite stick and as we saw in the wall the graphite almost became merged into the painting which was really useful and which we're going to use now on purpose so I'm going to just rub some graphite into those ready drawn lines so it's nice and raw on the page so next time i put some water on it that should hopefully really merge in to the ink so we're just gonna do that where the shadows would be at the base okay and then what i'm going to do is simply go over this with a bit of water and it should hopefully provide me with those dark shadowy lines and that's actually working so that's quite a good useful technique we've discovered to use with this medium
Now I haven't m uh, left many highlights in this at the moment and the reason for that is because I really, because I'm just experimenting with the medium, it's very new, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try adding the highlights at the end with this Tipex pen. Um, I feel like that will give it once again the lovely immature feel I was after and rather than um, a lovely sort of blended oh this is where the highlights are effect we're gonna have more of an artificial added in plop there's the highlights almost mirroring the actual material we're using and I think that is gonna be really exciting in fact I don't know how workable it is um, it's drying up the speed of light <laughs> put it straight onto the canvas and if I just keep swirling the Tipex pen around it creates um, as it dries it's creating patterns and uprooting the surface of it bringing more texture and three dimension into the clouds um, almost on that theme of sort of um, childish illustration it almost makes it like interactive and as if you can just feel it so that's quite interesting oh right so it's quite difficult to control um this tip x it's not like having a brush in your hand you're a lot more you're a lot less in control of it as you've also got to squeeze it to get the tipex to come out so that is making it quite tricky but this is all about the challenge it's just an experiment it's all about a challenge Right, so that is our ink experiment done. I'm in the shed because the light was quite bright outside and it was quite hard to film. But um, yeah, that was our experiment done and I think it went absolutely swimmingly well. Um, I really liked the use of the ink. I really loved applying it to the canvas. It was really satisfying and quite easy to apply. Uh, um, I also liked the way the, graph, the graphite worked with it to achieve darker areas and different textures. Um, as well as the tipex um, in the highlights of the sky and in the highlights and the clouds and I think that worked really well because you could really manipulate it especially with the heat we had to adapt to using it <coughs> to using it how we wouldn't normally and that was quite interesting quite fun and quite experimental and perhaps could be recreated purposefully um, when it's not so sunny also um, so that went really well I did also do another one uh, and this is a painting of a landscape in Bath uh, where I went a few summers ago with a friend and this was a picture I took and I did a painting of that and as you can see there's a lot paler colours in that one so this one we really um, accentuated the vibrancy whereas this one I sort of held back a bit I went for more paler colours um, but they both work really well in their own, sp in their own little ways so if you're thinking of trying out this medium, I really suggest you do, it's really good. And of course, it uses an old printer ink that would otherwise be going to waste. Um, it's also a great alternative to watercolour and quite exciting and quite fun to use. Um, so that's it. And I will be using this technique again in future videos, but I'm going to find some more creative, crazy ways to manipulate it. If you guys have got any ideas, please, please, please leave them in the comments and I'll take a look and see if there's anything really wacky that we can incorporate into the videos. Um, if not, please keep your eye out for the next upcoming videos where you may see similar techniques used in more and more advanced ways. So that is it from me. And as always, guys, if you love this video, uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share and I'll see you next time.